So today we're going to be talking about glycolysis and what its implications are for the MCAT. You know, a lot of people are asking me, what do I exactly need to know for glycolysis? Do I need to know all the enzymes? Do I need to know um, all the intermediates? Well, the answer is yes and no. And so I'm going to help you guys find the easy way to remember them so that you don't have to know every single one, but you can just know their classifications. So for example, if they gave you something like, oh, if I had glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, will I know if it's you know, do I actually need to know that the, the enzyme that does this is phosphoglucoisomerase? Well, the answer is no. But if they gave you this versus something that had maybe a kinase ending at the end, you should know that it's the actual isomerase. And we'll see why that's the case. So the first thing that we're going to be doing um, is we're going to be talking about all the different classifications. So. So the classifications of the enzymes, there's six, we're not going to talk about all of them, but the first thing we're going to be talking about um, is let's start with isomerase. And so what is isomerase? Isomerase is anything that changes um, between two different isomers of the same compound. And if you remember from before, from OCHEM, an isomer is anything with the same chemical formula but different structural orientation. So something like glucose to fructose would be an isomerase. And so for those that don't remember or um, it's okay, glucose looks like this. And fructose um, actually will look like, let's see, like this. So the same chemical formula, but just different structures. So an isomerase will convert between a glucose and a fructose. Um, the next thing we're going to be talking about um, is something called a transferase. And so an example of a transferase would be something like a kinase and a phosphatase. Okay, those are the two that you'll need to know um, for the MCAT. And so a transferase transfers a group onto from one um, thing to another. So for example, um, kinase transfers a phosphate, so it adds a phosphate group, and phosphatase subtracts a phosphate group. So for example, um, when we went from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, this was a kinase. And if you're curious, it's a hexokinase. And so if we want to go in the reverse reaction between glucose 6-phosphate now to glucose, that would have been a phosphatase. Okay, just so just know that distinction between the two and you'll be fine. Um, and so that's pretty much all we really need to talk about. Um, there's another one just for our, our knowledge, ligase versus lyase. Ligase is something, um, remember from molecular biology, is like DNA ligase is the formation of a bond. And lyase, we can think of it like lysis. So it breaks the bond. Okay? And so those are really the ones that we need to know. Um, there's also oxidoreductase and hydrolysis. And hydrolysis is anything that breaks a bond using um, water. So if we had water coming in and we go out like that, that would be a hydrolysis. And oxidoreductase, you can see in the name, oxidation and reduction. So something like um, that uses NAD plus and now goes to NADH. We have electrons coming in, oxidoreductase right there. Um, and so for now, we're going to talk about glycolysis, actual glycolysis and what we need to know about it. Um, so on the actual test, what will we need to know? Um, so you should be able to recognize the different intermediates of glycolysis. If they ever gave you a passage, you should be able to kind of figure out questions that they may ask you about. Uh, but you'll never have to memorize it. So what I really want you guys to know is that I want you guys to be able to see it here. Um, because you never want to see something on the MCAT for the first time. So I'll show you this, but I don't want you guys to memorize it. I just want you guys to kind of be familiar with it. And I'm not going to draw every single intermediate or every single enzyme, but the first step would be glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. Um, actually, before we do this, let's talk, about, let's talk about the goals of glycolysis. Why do we even want to do glycolysis? 
Well, the reason why is because for three reasons. One, we want to form ATP. Two, we want to form NADH. And three, we want to convert our very large glucose molecule down into a very small three carbon um, intermediate. And that can be used for different processes. And we'll see why and what actually these will become. But who does glycolysis exactly? Um, prokaryotes, eukaryotes, everybody does glycolysis. That's the one thing that the MCAT will like to test is that the glycolysis is the most ancient form of metabolism. So prokaryotes, eukaryotes, everybody will do it regardless of who you are. So back to the, the actual steps of glycolysis. So we start out with glucose and then we're going to go down to something glucose 6-phosphate. So all we did was add a phosphate group on the 6th carbon. Um, then from glucose 6-phosphate, we're going to go over to something called fructose 6-phosphate. And that's just the isomerase. Um, and then from fructose 6-phosphate, we're going to add another phosphate group. So fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, okay? And then from there, we're going to go into something called GA3P. And this is our first three carbon intermediate, okay? That's the one thing you need to remember about GA3P. So between fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, we're going to get GA3P and something called DHAP, which is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And you can kind of draw it out if you want. Um, it's not important what it looks like right now. But so from fructose 1,6-phosphate, which is a 6-carbon molecule, we're going to break it down into two 3-carbon molecules. And so eventually we're going to actually convert DHAP into GA3P. So we're going to have two GA3P molecules. And this is considered our preparatory phase. All right. And another thing to note is this. We're going to have an ATP coming in here. And whenever we have ATP hydrolysis, we're going to also have an ADP coming out. And you see ATP is adenine triphosphate, right? And this is adenine diphosphate. So obviously there's a phosphate that went somewhere. And if we see, it went right there. And again, you can, you can tell that there's got to be another ATP hydrolysis right here because we have a bisphosphate, meaning two. Um, and fructose 6-phosphate just has one. So we have to add a phosphate group right there. Um, so now we have at the end product, we have two GA3Ps, uh, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate.